Now let's continue with uh, chapter three. So last time, so we learned uh, the basic, uh, let's see. So we learned some uh, text box control, input text box control. We learned some variables, okay? We learned some variables and also we learned some numerical type, okay, numerical type. So for example, we learned three different types, int, whole numbers, double, floating numbers between a wide range of uh, limits, decimal numbers, let's see a smaller range. In this course, as I mentioned in the last time, in this course, decimal, most of the time, decimal will be enough if you want to uh, use floating point numbers, okay, floating point numbers. And you can see these are examples, int house work equals 40, with whole number, double temperature equals 98.6, okay, decimal period equals 28.75 M. So for decimal type, so you should have an M in the end, okay, in the end, okay. So uh, by the way, last time there is uh, was a student who asked uh, if uh, in our program, if uh, we have uh, more courses to more courses uh, related to programming and data analytics the answer is before this semester for the undergrad program no so basically you have this course as a first course for computer programming and if you have you, you can go you can get a good grade so you can register the 4000 level java programming course advanced programming so there may be a database course okay for you and uh, we don't have too many courses in data analytics and data mining okay but in this semester you see that uh, so all three campuses have been unified into one campus okay in this semester the department or the school we call it school a school is discussing uh, to offer advanced undergrad students to take the uh, master level data mining course OK, it means that if you uh, have good performance in this course and in other uh, computer programming course, so you can apply, you may be able to apply to take the master level data mining or uh, statistical data mining course. So uh, uh, when you take the master level course, the requirement may be different, but you can take more courses in data analytics. It means in order to uh, be real professional in business analytics, so you should uh, try to learn as much as possible from this course and from other programming classes offered in our department, okay? So the department is working on that plan. So for all the students, when they finish, so you should be able to uh, know how uh, it, it, you can, you, it, it can uh, uh, be organized, okay? It means that this is very useful. First course for you to learn computer programming because for all the data analytics courses in the future, all you want to take, computer programming is a basic, basic stuff. It's a basis. You have to know uh, very well for language, okay, for example, R or no, Python. C sharp is a start. We pick C sharp because you, it's easier for students, okay? And um, you can learn some basic programming skills and you work with a graphical interface. It means so students can be interested in the courses, okay? So what I want to say is this is a first course for most of you to learn computer programming. You should learn as much as possible if you really want to take other advanced courses in business analytics, in business analytics. So let's continue. And this is this, these are some examples if for int variables. So if you assign int variables with decimal floating numbers or floating numbers with the M, so these are errors. So for double, it can uh, incorporate int numbers. But if you assign decimal to double, it's an error, as I mentioned last time. So for decimal type, so it can take decimal 150.25 M. Remember, we should have an M associated with decimal type. So also decimal price equals 50. Decimal can also uh, be compatible with int numbers, whole numbers, it's okay. However, if you assign 599.0 to a decimal type variable sales, so it's an error, okay, it's an error. 
So when you work on your project, okay, when you work on your project, you should pay attention to these compatibility issues. Okay, because sometimes you may have errors. Those errors come from these compatibility issues. Okay, compatibility issues. So here is one example. If I ask you to declare a decimal variable named sum and assign its value to be 45.54, so you should remember that for decimal type, you should have M in the end. So uh, some students may be uh, curious, can you can we invert, convert a type, a, a, a number in one type to a different type? The answer is yes. So to allow a programmer to overrule the implicit numeric conver conversion rules shown on the previous slide, C Sharp allows code that will explicitly convert numeric data type known as type casting. So this is done with a cast operator, which is a data type keyword enclosed in a pair of parentheses. So be careful about this uh, special format, for example, in this example, right? So first, at first, we declare an int variable, int whole number, so int whole number. Then we declare another decimal variable, decimal money number equals 4500.50m. 40, Remember, we have m for decimal type. You can see that whole number is a int type. Decimal numbers is a decimal type, okay? Whole Money number is a decimal type. If we want to uh, set the decimal type money number to the whole number in type, so we need to use what? Use a, a conversion cast operator. It's like this, right? We have a pair of parentheses. Inside this pair of parentheses, we have a int. So it means we want to convert the money number from decimal type. To in type. Okay, this is this is how we do transformation. So for this specific example, you may want to ask the money number is 4500.50, but the int number, whole number, can only take whole number. So what will be the result from this conversion? What will be the result? So in C sharp, the result will be so the decimal part will be ignored. Only the whole part, okay, only the integer number will be kept. Okay, that is the rule in this transformation. For example, in this example, decimal money number equals 4500.50m. When we want to transform this decimal type to int type with a pair of parentheses with a int, so the result will be whole number equals 4500. Okay, 4,500, the point 50 part will be ignored. Okay, will be ignored. So this is which how we transform from a decimal type to a int type. So for the uh, second example, double, we have double real number. It means we first declare a double type, real number. Then we declare a decimal money number equals 625.70m. Remember, for decimal, we have an M, okay? Don't forget this. So then here, real number equals, we have a pair of parentheses inside this pair of, of parentheses, we have a double. So money number, it means we want to transform the decimal money number to a double type, okay? So basically, we have 625.70, and we we'll keep this number, but the format, okay, the type, is transformed from decimal to double, decimal to double, okay? So this is how we do transformation, type transformation. So here is one example, what will be the value of the variable in sum after we execute the following statements? Here we have decimal sum equals 55.56m, int in sum equals int sum, okay, in sum. So you see that, as I mentioned, for uh, when we transform a decimal type to the int type, the floating part, decimal part, will be cut off. Okay, will be cut off. So basically, the result is int sum equals 55. Okay, the point 
56 part will be cut off. It will be cut off. Okay, good. So the next topic is performing calculations. Okay, in the first project we are going to work with, you need to do some very simple calculation. For example, how to calculate the final bill. Okay, final bill. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Five different types of math operators. We have plus addition, we have minus subtraction, we have times multiplication, we have a division. Okay, division. We also have modulus. Okay, so it is clear what is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For modulus, so basically it is it divides one number by another and gives the remainder. Okay, basically. We want the remainder. Okay. So, for example, here I give you example. Okay. For example, if we want to, uh, so the operator is uh, percent, percent, uh, percentage uh, symbol. Okay. For example, if we want to calculate ten, so modulus three, right? For example, we want to calculate this. So it is ten divided by three. And we, it will return remainder. 10 divided by 3 will be 3, right? The remainder will be 1. Okay, remainder will be 1. Because uh, 10 equals 3 times 3 plus 1, right? So if you if you use 10 modulus 3, so the remainder will be 1. So so time modulus three equals one. Okay, I just remind you how to calculate modulus. Okay, modulus. So you may want, you may ask, why we need the modulus? So it is useful. Okay, sometimes in the future, if you take advanced courses, okay, advanced courses in graduate program. So uh, in simulation, so you will see that, so the modulus will be very useful to generate random numbers. Here, uh, we will not go deep in this topic because it is not. We just have plus, minus, multiplication, division, and modulus. Okay? Five different types of math operators. So, what will be the uh, operator precedence? Okay, we have some kind of priority order. So a uh, higher priority will be negative. It is not minus, it is negative. For example, minus four, it is negative four, okay? So that is highest, for example, in this example, we have x equals minus four plus three. So minus four, minus part, this minus, will be first priority. So minus four plus three, we will get minus one, okay? We will have the result minus one. In the second level, second uh, position, we have multiplication, division, and modulus. So it means these three math operators, multiplication, division, and uh, modulus, they, are, they have the same priority, okay? If we have these three, so we will do it first, okay, one by one. For example, in this example, x equals minus 4 plus 4 modulus 3 times 13 plus 2, right? So from this list, right, higher priority will be minus, minus 4, okay, minus 4 will be here. In the second level, we have multiplication, division, and uh, modulus. Among these three, we will uh, use uh, first come, first serve uh, criteria. You see that here, the first one, it is modulus. For modulus three, the remainder is one. Okay, it is one. So one times 13, so it is 13, okay? You need to, how, you need to know how this calculation is performed, okay? For modulus three equals uh, one. One times 13, so will be 13, okay? Then we have minus four plus 13 plus two, okay? It is the result will be 11. Okay, the result will be 11. 
So in the lowest level, we have plus and minus. It means when we finish negative and we finish multiplication, division, and modulus, we can perform addition and subtraction. Okay, we can do uh, addition and subtraction. So for example, in this example, x equals 6 plus 3 minus 4 plus 6 times 3. So in this equation, we, we see there are there is no negative, okay? No negative, but we have multiplication here. So six times three will be 18, okay, 18. So we have six plus three minus four plus 18, okay? The result will be 23, okay, 23. So for students who forget, okay, who forget, for example, forget how to do modulus, okay? So try to practice these examples to see how calculations will can be performed, okay? So in the future, so when you take advanced graduate level, okay, or higher level uh, undergrad level courses in data analytics, so using math calculations to analyze data, so it is very common. It is in every algorithm, okay, in every algorithm. So this is the order in which mixed operators are evaluated in a mathematical expression. Operations involving mathematical operators at the same level are evaluated from left to right, okay? So the order is uh, left to right, okay? Left to right. So now we have some examples. What are the values of the int variable x? after we execute the following statement after we execute the following statement so for the first one we have minus two plus two modulus three times four plus one okay so we have minus two plus five modulus three times four plus one okay so i so i try to uh, go slow okay to try to show that how we calculate it so based on the priority so the first priority is minus two okay it is minus two so we have So we have okay, the first one, it is minus two, right? Then for the second level, we want to deal with uh, modulus, uh, multiplication, and division, right? These three different things. We observe we have this, right? Five modulus three times four, okay? Now we want to deal with this first, okay? Five modulus three. So five modulus three will be two, right? Because five divided by three, remainder will be two, okay, two. Then two times four, two times four will be eight. Okay, two times four will be eight, right? Two times four will be eight. So after we finish first level, second level, so we get minus two plus eight plus one, right? Minus two plus eight plus one. Now we finish these two plus signs, we got it is seven, okay? It is seven. So this is the first question. So for the second one, minus two plus three times seven, modulus five plus one, okay? So we have minus two plus three times seven, modulus five, Plus one. So we use the same strategy. Okay, we use same strategy. So the first level it is minus two. Okay, minus one will be the first level. So the second level will be multiplication, division, and modulus. We have this part, right? We have this part. So seven times three, and for this multiplication and the modulus, we go from the left to the right, okay, left to right. Three times seven will be 21, okay? So 21 modulus five, it is 21 divided by five 
and we use the remainder. It is one. Okay, it is one. So we get minus two plus one plus one. We got zero. Okay, we got zero. So this is how we get zero. Okay. The third example is a little bit tricky. Let's see it. X equals minus two. Okay, X. Let's read X minus two. Plus seven divided by three times three. Seven divided by three times three plus ninety-nine divided by one hundred. Well, one hundred. Okay. So this is a tricky problem. Tricky problem. Why? Let's see. So similarly, first step is still minus two, right? Minus two. That is sure. So the problem comes from the other the other parts. Okay, let's see. Go back to the problem. So x is an uh, input. That's a key tricky part. Okay, you see in the problem what are the values of the int variable x? It means the type of variable x will be int. Okay, will be int. So for int variable, if we go back to this variable type, right? For int, it cannot keep decimal part. Okay, so all decimal part, all the floating part will be cut off for int. So for int variables, it can only deal with whole numbers. So that is a key idea for this problem. So now let's see uh, the tricky part of this problem, or the tricky part of this problem. So for a math operator priority, we need to deal with modulus, multiplication and division, right? So we have this part, right, first. So you need to be careful because this part is a little bit tricky, okay? So for seven divided by three, right? Seven divided by three is what? It's, it is 2.33 something, right? If you think about the, 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 the complete result, 2.33 something. However, remember now X is a int variable. It means seven divided by three for the two point three three something. So the point three three part will be cut off. Okay, it will be cut off. It means for the int type, right? For int type, right? Not for int. Since x is int, right? X is int, right? So seven divided by three, so equals two. Yeah. <laughs> so you see that uh, because X is int, right? Seven divided by three, it equals 2.33 something, right? It is three three something, but however, this part is gone because it's int. Okay, it's int. So now you have seventy divided by three equals two because of the int type. Two times three it is six. Okay. Intuitively, you see, you can see that seven divided by three times three it is seven, but because of the int type, seven divided by three is two. Two times three is six. Is six. So we have so minus two plus six, right? The second part equals six. Okay. Now let's consider the division sign. Okay. Division is ninety-nine divided by ninety-nine divided by one hundred, right? Ninety-nine divided by one hundred. Okay. Ninety-nine divided by hundred, it is four ninety-nine, right? Remember, still we consider in type, okay? In type, so ninety-nine divided by one hundred is zero, because it is point nine point nine nine, right? But the point part will be cut off, okay? It is zero. So for this question, so when we observe the calculation, we have minus two plus six 
plus zero, it is four, okay? It is four. So that's why when you declare variables in computer programming, you have to be very careful. Here in this one, right, because we use int. So the result is quite different. For example, if you just calculate with your calculator. So two plus 70 divided by three times three is seven, plus 99 divided by one, it is 0.99, right? So the result will be uh, 5.99. But because of this int type, the result will be four. Okay, the result will be four, okay? So this is why we have the answer four for this example, okay? This, uh, the third example in this slide, it is a little bit tricky, okay? I have uh, explained all the details of this example. So for students who are uh, not 100% clear about this calculation, so try to refer to my explanation here, okay? Why we have seven divided by three equals two because of a int type. 99 divided by 100 is zero because of the int type, okay? Then we have minus two plus six plus zero, which equals four, okay, which equals four. So uh, this is, so grouping with parentheses, parentheses can be used to specify processing order so when multiple, multiple parentheses are used in an expression, the innermost parentheses are processed first. If two sets of parentheses are at the same level, they are processed from left to right. So for this rule, it is the same as what we learned from mathematics, okay, general mathematics, okay? We use parentheses to group operators so for example, for this one, right, we have first level, first group, uh, set of parentheses, and inside this one, we have another two. First one, it is four times five. Second one, it is six minus two, okay? So for this one, we first calculate four times five. Now we have six minus two, right? Then minus 24, okay, minus 24, okay? Now, uh, Four times five, 20. 20 divided by four, it is five, right? Five minus 24, it is minus 19, okay? Minus 19. This, this one, it is not uh, very difficult, but the previous one, this example, okay? It is tricky. So you need to practice it if you are not 100% clear, okay, 100% clear. So uh, a math expression performs a calculation and gives a value, okay? For example, we have int x equals y, 5, y equals 4. So we, when we do x plus y, we got number 9. It's a int value because both x, you see both x and y, both variables are int type, okay? So when we do x plus y, we have, we sum up two int variables, five plus four, we get nine. Nine is a int value. So in this specific example, we used two stream method, which is a frequently used method in this course. What is that? It is, we want to transform a number or two stream, why? You see here we use message box message box start show okay so for message box start show method we need string to output this message we need a string right but x plus y x is five y is four for x plus y we sum up two int numbers so the numerical value cannot be displayed in message box dot show. Okay, message box dot message box dot show needs a string type. That is why we use the two stream method, which can be used to transform a number to a string. Then, with this, uh, by using this two stream method, we can use message box dot show method to display the result. Okay, to display the result. So be sure to follow the order of operations and the group with 
parentheses if necessary. For example, for uh, this group of parentheses, we first calculate a plus b, then divided by four. Okay, a plus b divided by four. a plus b divided. So in a calculation of mixed data type, the data type of the result is determined by when an operation involves an int and a double, the int is treated as a double, and the result is a double. The, re the reason is, so double variable can be compatible with int type number, right? It means if you have five, okay? For example, if you have, uh, so if you have, right, if you have uh, double, right, for example, x equals uh, 5.34 plus 6, right? If you do this, okay, if you do this, so 6, which is a in number, will be transformed to a, a double number, okay? Because the intuition is double number, double variable can be compatible with int numbers, okay? Similarly, when an operation involves an int and a decimal, the int is treated as a decimal and the result is a decimal. Similarly, you can uh, sum up a decimal with a int. The int will transform the decimal automatically. Okay. So an operation involving a double and a decimal is not allowed unless a cast operator is used to convert the types to match. Okay. So, uh, the next problem we have uh, learned this, uh, just learned this. So integer division. So dividing an integer by an integer result in an uh, integer. So with any fractional portion of result truncated. The fractional part, the decimal part, will be truncated. For example, in this one, 5x equals 5, y equals 2. So we want to, you first calculate 5 divided by 2. Then we use the two stream method to transform the result from number to stream and display the result. Okay. So x divided by five divided by y. So the exact result will be 2.5. However, both x and y are in numbers. Okay, x divided by y, we only have two. Okay, point five part will be truncated. Part of. So to retain any fractional portion of the division, you can use a cast operator to change the data type of one or both of the operands. For example, this one, x equals five, y equals four. We want to keep the 0.5 part. Then we have a cast operator, which is a pair of parentheses. Then inside we have a double, a double. So double x divided by y, now we can keep the result as 2.5, not just 2. Similarly, when we use this cast operator, the 2.5 is a number. It is not a string. It is a number. Therefore, we can still use the two stream method to transform a number to a string. Then we can use the message box dot show method to display the result. For the first example, you will see the message two, not two point five. For the second example, this example, you will see the result two point five because we here we use a cast operator double, okay, to transform the int to double. We can keep the two point. Okay. So when you did uh, work on your project. Okay, in this project, you need to build business applications. Okay, so most of the time, you need to do some very simple calculations. In order to display the result, okay, you need to be careful to use the two stream method because for any calculation, the result will be number, int number, decimal number, or double number. They are numbers. However, in order to display it in a label text property or in a message box, you need to use the two stream method, the two stream method, okay? This is the thing you need to be careful. So we have some examples. 
first one, assume that there are two int variables, num1 and num2. Write one statement to display the sum of the two variables in a message box. Here you see the requirement is write one statement. It means you need to write one line statement to satisfy the problem. Not two lines, not three lines. One line statement. So here, so the result, the answer is message box dot show inside. First, we need to calculate the sum of the two variables, num1 and num2, right? Then you need to use the two stream method to transform the number to a string in order to display the result in a message box. Okay, in order to display the result in a message box. So for the second example, what is the value of the int variable x after we execute the following statement? Similar, it is a tricky problem. Okay, it's a tricky problem. So when you have this problem in the exam, okay, you should be able to get the result is zero immediately. Okay, if you are calculating these numbers in detail with your calculator, you fall in the trap. You fall in the trap. Because x is a int variable, okay? Int variable. 11 divided by 12 is a number less than 1. Okay, it's a fractional number. So if the fractional part is truncated, then 11 divided by 12 is 0. Similarly, 13 divided by 14 is a number less than 1. So if the fractional part is truncated, it is 0, 2. Okay, 0, 2. Same, same thing can be applied to 15 divided by 16, 17 divided by 18. Both numbers are less than 1. Okay, both numbers are, le are less than 1. So if we truncate the fractional part, both numbers are zero, okay? So we have zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. So the result is zero, okay? You have to be very clear about this uh, idea. So for in number, in type variables, so any fractional part will be cut off, will be truncated, okay? Will be. So, Okay, I see your question. Okay. So you see, I see some of you are ask about the uh, modulus, right? So for modulus questions, let me give you another example, right? For example, 20 modulus 3, okay? No, no, no. 7, for example, right? 20 modulus 7, okay? So for 20 modulus 7, so we have 20 equals 7 times 2 plus 6, right? Okay, 7 times 2 plus 6. So one use 20 divided by 7, okay? So the remainder will be 6, okay? The remainder will be 6. So that's why 20 modulus 7, it is equals 6, okay? It equals 6, okay? So uh, uh, if you are confused, okay, still confused, try to practice these examples, okay, these examples. So combined assignment operators, C sharp provides combined assignment operators, okay. These operators allow a programmer to perform a arithmetic operation and an assignment of result to a variable with a single operator. Although these operators are not tied to be used, they are popular since they shorten the writing of statements. The shortcut of some kind of statement, okay? Some kind of statements. So we have four different types, okay? Plus, equal, minus, equal. You, you see the first row, first column, okay? First column. Plus, equal, minus, equal, times, equal, divided by equal. Uh, modulus, equal, okay? 
So this example is x plus equals 5. OK, x plus equals 5. So it is equivalent to x equals x plus 5. So you may be confused. What is that? So first, let's see what is x equals x plus 5. Okay. It looks not, not very uh, straightforward. However, it is clear. What is that? You first consider the right hand side. OK, for example, if. Let's see if x equals 2, OK? So before this statement, OK? Before this statement, x equals 2. Let's assume it, OK? Let's assume it. Let's assume. So for this uh, kind of statement, we first consider the right-hand side of this equation. OK, right-hand side. So x plus 4, it is 2 plus 4, right? 2 plus 5. x plus 5, it is 2 plus 5, right? Because x equals 2 before this statement. So 2 plus 5, it equals 7, right? It equals 7. So it means, it means, so we first calculate x plus 5, it is 7. Then we set the right-hand side variable equals this result, okay? So then we do x equals 7, okay? It means we first calculate the right-hand side of this equation, then set this result equal to the left-hand side variable, okay? This is how it works, okay? This is how it works. So in this example, x equals x plus 5. It means we first calculate x plus 5, which is 2 plus 5, 7. Then we set x equals 7, okay? x equals 7, okay? You need to remember how this uh, statement is executed, okay? How this statement is executed. So you see here the description here is the old value of five plus five, uh, x plus five. Old value here it is two of x. Old value of x equals two, right? So plus five is seven. Then we set x equals to the new value seven, which means after this statement x equals seven. X equals seven. So the shortcut, okay? But in actual coding part, okay? Most or most pro professional programmers, they will not do this. They will not use x equals x plus 5, okay? It is too long. We have some shortcut for this, okay? So which is x plus 5, okay? It means this x plus equals 5, it is just a different way for this x equals x plus 5, OK? So it means when you read the code from other programmers, if you see something like this, you need to understand x plus equals 5. It, it, it is equivalent to x equals x plus 5, or x equals x plus 5. Similarly, minus equal, it is y minus equals 2. It is equivalent to y equals y minus 2, y equals y minus 2, okay? Old value of y minus 2, for example, if as we assume before this, y equals 5, okay? We first calculate y minus 2, 5 minus 2 equals 3, well, then we set y equals 3, so y equals 3, okay? z times equals 10, z equals z times 10, okay? For example, let's use another example. Z times equals 10, right? So it is equivalent to do Z equals Z times 10, right? Z times 10. So it means assume Z equals 3 before this statement, right? Statement. Then z equals 30, right? Z equals 30 after we execute this, z times equals 10. 
because we first calculate z times 10, which is 30, then assign 30 to the variable z, z equals 30, okay, z equals 30. So multiple uh, the, the, the division equals a divided equals b, it is a equals a divided by b, okay, a divided by b. Modulus equals c modulus equals 3, c equals c modulus 3, okay, let's use another example, okay, if we consider so a equals a a divide equals b, right? That is the example. Assume a is eighteen, right? B is three. Okay, b is three. Before this, uh, this uh, statement. So it is equivalent to consider A equals A divided by B, right? Divided by B. Semicolon. Okay, A divided by B, 18 divided by 3, it is 6. We first calculate 18 divided by 3, it is 6. Then A equals 6, right? We first calculate 18 divided by 3, which equals 6, then set A equals 6. Okay, equals 6. Okay, we have A. Six. Okay. Right. Okay. Equals six. Okay. So here I give you some several examples to explain this combined assignment operators. Okay. So in actual computer programming, people use the second column. Okay. Nobody is going to use this one. Okay. Even though they both are correct. Okay. Or to be professional, we use a second column, a statement in the second column. So here is one example. What is the value of variable variables x and y after we execute, execute the following statements? You see, this is example, okay? So I will try to explain all the details of this example. Let me call the example here, okay, first. We have int x equals 3, int y equals 4, x times equals 2, y equals x plus y, x equals x minus y, okay? You see, we have five lines. This is uh, maybe the most complicated example we have met okay, in this course. We have five lines of statement in this example. Okay, let's calculate the result step by step. Okay, step by step. So the first two lines of statement is, is clear, right? It is clear. So for this one, so let me use this as common. Remember, common is this, right? Common, okay? So after the first one, x equals 3, right? Okay, x equals 3. y equals 4, right? y equals 4, okay? So we uh, after the first two statements, we have x equals 3, y equals 4. Let me use common. x equals 3, y equals 4. 4, okay, y equals 4. Now we move on to the third line of statements, x times equals 2, okay? So we have learned, so it is equivalent to consider x equals x times 2, okay? I just copied the definition from this this table, okay, this table, x times equals 2, it is equivalent to x equals x times 2, okay? The value of, the old value of x, now it is 3, right? It is 3, okay? So 3 times 2 will be 6, okay? It equals 6, so it means x equals so after this statement, right, x equals 6, right, x equals 6, okay? So let me use a different color to 
to label the uh, right label the comment okay to differentiate from the actual code the code is in black so right okay okay so you see x equals two it is equivalent to consider x equals x times two x is the old, the old value of x is three three times two it is six six okay that x equals six x equals six so there we have x equals six the y value has not been changed y equals four right so now x equals six y equals four so y equals x plus y for this one remember for this one we first consider what consider the right hand side calculate the right hand side then with the result we set result equals to the variable on the left hand side okay x plus y it is x is six y is four right okay y is four so it means x is six right y equals four Values. Okay, old values, x is 6, y equals 4. We will first calculate x plus y, which is 6 plus 4. 6 plus 4 is 10, right? Then we set y equals 10. Okay, y equals 10. It means after this statement, we have y. Okay, y equals 10. Now let's consider the last step of the, the last statement in this problem, x equals x minus y. Similarly, we are going to calculate the right hand side first. We calculate the right hand side first and set x equals the result. Okay. So for all the values for this statement, x has not been changed, x is still 6, right? x equals 6, y equals, y now it is 10, okay, it is 10. So, Okay, now we have for this statement x equals x minus y. So the old values of x is 6. The old values of y it is 10. Okay, it is 10. So we have x equals 6 minus 10. We first calculate 6 minus 10 first. 6 minus 10 will be minus 4, right? 6 minus 10 equals minus 4. So basically, after this statement, we have x equals minus 4. Okay? So you see that after all these five lines of statement, right? So after five, this five statements, right? x is minus 4, right? y equals 10, okay? So try to analyze these calculations step by step. So it is very important. Why? Because in the future, when you want to learn algorithms, learn some algorithms. So the first step is to clear all the syntax error. For example, you see in this statement, you lose a semicolon. Okay? In that statement, uh, you, you have a typo. Okay, you clear all these syntax errors. So when you clear all the syntax errors, it is quite possible that the results are still not correct. It is really it is the case. There are some other problems. Okay. So these problems are logic errors. The logic errors. 
So for law, in order to figure out logic error, okay, you will debug your program. Debug means you will ask Visual C Sharp to run your code line by line. Okay, line by line. When you run the code line by line, you need to make sure that for each step, the result from the algorithm matches your expectation. It is the same as your expectation, okay? If the result from C sharp is different from your expectation, it implies that there is some problem, okay? You need to dig into this statement to see what's going on, okay? What's going on? So I just show you how to analyze so a very simple five lines of statements, one line by line, okay, line by line. So the result here will be x equals minus four, y equals 10, okay? You have to be very clear, okay, very clear. So uh, for students who are not uh, are very clear about it, you see that, so I have explained, right, all the details, all the details of uh, this example, okay? So you can practice by yourself. For example, how we get the answer x equals minus four, y equals 10, okay? Y equals 10. So for today's, when we finish today's lecture in the quiz, okay, I will give you a similar question like this. So you see in the slides, I have the answer x equals minus four, y equals 10, okay? So in today's quiz exercise, so you have an exercise like this, okay? Problem like this. You need to show all the steps, like what I have done here, okay? Do not just give me two numbers, okay? Because first, I have no idea how you get these two numbers without any analysis, okay? Secondly, if your answers are wrong, then I have no idea if you get any points because of that, okay? Show me all the possible steps. That's the thing I want to emphasize, okay? Show me all the possible steps, okay? Let me uh, uh, explain. Let me explain the chart. Remember, I type it in the chart, okay? For the uh, example on uh, right page uh, uh, 40, okay? So you need to learn how to put this calculations are performed step by step. Okay. In uh, today's quiz, right? You need to show these steps, okay? You need to show these steps. It is not enough to just provide a number as the result, okay? So for this example, you need to uh, learn how these calculations are performed step by step. In today's quiz, you need to show these steps. It is not enough to just provide uh, a number as the result, okay? I put it in the chat, so, so it is clear on the record, okay? You need to... And the next topic is inputting and outputting numeric values a data value input into a form control with a keyword keyboard is considered to be a string even if it looks like a number. So the text property of a text box control stores a string even if the value appears numeric. Such values must be converted to numeric data types before they can be used in mathematical calculations. The parse methods can be used to convert string values that 
contain only numbers, numeric characters to numeric data type. Okay, what is this? It is when you build the business, uh, the form business application, right? As I mentioned before, we need to use text box property for input. We need to use label for control, right? For output, okay, for output. So when we read the text property from a text box control, for example, the, the input is 15, okay? It is the string 15, not the number 15. So when we want to output the result, for example, 65 to a label, right? 65 has to be in the string format, okay? The number format cannot be output to the, to the label text property. The key idea is the text property of both text box and label, so text property are strings, okay? They are string. So in this case, we need to use a parse method parse method. So for example, for input, right? So we have hours worked text box, okay? We want to use this text box text property, okay? So in this one, we want int.parse, okay? It means we first want to read the input from the text box dot text property. When we read it, it's a string. We use int.parse means we want to transform the string to a int number. Okay, int parse. This is how we read input. Okay, read the input. For the second example, double temperature equals double parse. Temperature text box dot text. We would like to first read the temperature text box dot text property, which is a string. Then we use double dot parse to transform the text the string to a double number, okay, double number. So the, for the third example, decimal money equals decimal parse. Now we have money text box dot text. So we first read this money text box property, okay, money text box property. It's a string. Then we use decimal dot parse to transform the string to a number, to a decimal number. So these three examples, from these three examples, we learn how we can read inputs from text box. If we need to read numeric values from this text box control, we need to use int parse, double parse, decimal parse, okay? This is how we read input, numeric input, okay? In the labs and assignments, you need to read input. In all these examples, in all these projects. And this is how we read inputs. Okay, how we read inputs. Okay. So use two string method to display numerics. Okay, two string methods. So when we want to display output, okay, when we want to display output, we use two string method. Okay. The text property of a control only accepts string values. To display a number in a text box or label control or in a message box requires converting the value to string type. In C sharp, all variables can utilize the to string method that converts a numeric variable's value to string type. For example, the gross pay is 1550.0m. It's a decimal number. When we want to display the result to a label control text property, we use two string method. Okay, this is how we transform a numeric value to a string. Same thing here, int my number equals one, two, three. So we can display this number by using two string method in a message box. Okay, message box. Next one, int ID number is one zero four four. String output is your ID number is, right? We use this plus means we learned last time, right? It is string concatenation. We concatenate different strings in one paragraph or in one sentence, okay? This one, your ID number is, it is plus ID number, okay? Plus ID, okay? This is how we transform numeric values to, to the uh, output. 
of the output. So now we have some examples. Example one, assume that there is a text box control named price text box. Write one statement to declare a decimal variable named price and assign its value to be the content of the text box. In this example, I'm asking you how you can read a numeric value, decimal format, okay? You need to use decimal parse method and press the text box dot text property, okay? So transform string to decimal type, okay? So in the second example, assume that there is a label control named result label, write statements to declare a decimal variable named result and assign its value to be 15.56, then display the variable result in the label. First, we declare result equals 15.56 M. Remember, you need M for decimal type. Then because result now is a number, it is not a string, right? So we use the two stream method to display it in a text property, via text property. So this one, it is formatting numbers with the two stream method, okay, two stream method. The two stream method can also uh, optionally format a number to appear in a specific way. The following table lists the format strings and how they are used with sample outputs, okay? For example, N, capital N or small n, it is number format, okay, number format. F, capital F, or small f, it is fixed point scientific format, okay? Fixed point scientific format. So N3 means keep three digits for accuracy. F2 means two digits for decimal, okay? So letter E will be used for exponential scientific format, okay? It is, if we keep three, right, it is 1.235, keep three digits. So the 10 power of five, okay? C is currency format, okay? So in this course, sometimes, so there will be a requirement for the format, output format, okay? You need to be careful about the requirement in the lab or assignment manual to see the format. So C will be the currency format. You see, for this one, it will have dollar sign, okay, dollar sign. So P will be percentage format, okay, one point, one, two, three. So if you use two string, double quote, you see how we use it. So inside the, uh, the pair of parentheses for the two string method, you use a double quote with the option, okay, option. So P will be the percentage format. So for point one, two, three, the percentage format can give us 20.30%, is 20.30%, okay. So this is one example. Assume that we have declared a decimal variable named total and there is a label control named total label. Write a statement to display the variable in the currency format, okay? In this example, so you are asked to display the result. So in the currency format, okay? So the label. For the label, text property is string format, okay? String format. That is the first thing you need to be careful. So in order to transform numbers to string, we need to use two string method, okay? The second thing you have to be careful is we have a requirement of currency format, okay? For the currency format, we have the option double quote C, okay? That is the currency format, okay? So this is one example. So for other re format requirements, we have these five different ways. Okay, these five different ways, okay? So let me see. So this is simple exception handler. What is that? For example, in a text box control, right? I put, uh, I want to read the numbers. Okay, I want to read input numbers. However, the input is a name. For example, I want to read the price, $6.50 but the input is a name, last name, Smith, for the first name Smith, right? Smith is not a number, it's a error, right? It's an error. Once C sharp read the Smith, it cannot be used as an input, then there is error. 
if we don't have something to deal with that, okay, deal with that, then C sharp, your program will crash. Okay, will crash. So which is not desirable. We want to prevent this case, right? From happening. So the, in this case, we do an exception is an unexpected error that happens while a programmer is running. If an exception is not handled by the program, the program will abruptly halt, crash, which is a very bad case. Okay, we don't we don't want this. C sharp allows you to write exception handler code that responds to exceptions and prevents a program crashing. So in C sharp, an exception handler structure is available called a try catch. Okay, so starting from I think this lab and the first assignment, you need to use this structure try catch. The try catch structure. So the try block is for statements that could have exceptions. The catch block is for statements used to respond to an exception if it happens. It means all the regular statements are in the try part. Okay. If everything is okay, that's it. It's good. Okay. However, if something wrong happens in the try part, C sharp will jump out of the try part then go to the catch part immediately, okay, to prevent crashing, to prevent crashing, okay, to prevent crashing. So that is the uh, idea. So the break mode is, for example, this one, right? So we have uh, this form, enter the gallon of gas used, right? We would like the number. However, in here we have W, X, Y, Z, which is a string. For this one, it's not number, it's error. So we want to prevent this from happening, okay? Prevent this from happening. It will crash, okay? Here we use try catch. You see we have two big blocks. First block is try associated with a pair of curly braces. Second part is catch with another pair of curly braces. So see, it will work as follows, okay? C sharp will try to uh, conduct, to, to perform all the uh, statements inside try part first. In this example, right? So let's assume, right? We put enter the number of mile driving, 300, and the gallons of gas used, W, X, Y, Z, right? Here we have Double miles, double gallons, double mileage. This is okay, right? When we read miles equals double dot parts. Now you see miles is 300, which is good, okay? Double parts, which is perfect. Then C shall move on next one. Gallons equals double dot parts, gallon text box dot next. And the gallon of gas used, which is not a number, right? It means when C sharp goes here, C sharp sees something on you. See something which is wrong, right? Then C sharp will stop here. Jump out the, the try part, go to catch, display the message. Okay? Invalid data was entered. It means by using this try catch structure, so this crash issue can be avoided. Okay? We can deal with that. But however, if everything is okay, for example, uh mouse try to 300, right? Uh, gas used is, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 20 gas, uh, uh, let's see, 20 gallons, for example, right? 20 gallons. In this case, C sharp says, this is okay, this is okay, do this division, do this, what is done. No catch part, okay? If everything is normal, just do try part. In try part, if something or euro happens, then C sharp will jump out the try part, move to catch part immediately, okay? This is how it works. So if you do not want to build your own message, you want to use the default message in the C sharp. There are some default me error messages. You do this for catch part. You have an option which is exception ex. Okay, you just copy this format. Then you do message box show ex dot message. Okay, there are default message error messages embedded in C sharp. You can use this message. You can also use the met the customized message from yourself. For example, this one, invalid data was entered, okay? Either way is fine. 